I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. to episode 188 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. In this episode, we're reading the New Testament book of John, chapter 21, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Flor de Oliva Maduro in the Churchill 7x50 Vitola. So let's go to uh, CigarsInternational.com and see what they have to say. All the quality you expect from Oliva at dog-walking prices. Gilberto Oliva, Oliva and his family are a tobacco powerhouse. It seems like everything they touch turns to gold, and this value-priced Maduro beauty is certainly no exception. Utilizing a deep, oily Connecticut broadleaf wrapper over long fillers from Nicaragua and the Dominican, this isn't like the other lesser bargain brands you've tried. You'll get notes of earth, coffee, and spice with a satisfying finish and a consistent burn. You might get these for yard work, but don't be surprised if they make it into your regular rotation. And the profile is uh, medium. Uh, wrapper is Connecticut broadleaf. Filler, Dominican, and, and uh, Nicaraguan. And the Vitolas are Churchill, 7x50, Robusto, 5x50, Toro, 6x50, and the Torpedo, uh, the Torpedo, 6.5x52. That is the Flor de Oliva Maduro from Oliva Cigars. let's get into our reading of John chapter 21. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV. In verse 1, After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer, gar outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it, and bread. 
Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And Spurgeon comments on verse 12, Come and have breakfast, Jesus told them. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. I cannot tell how our Lord provided that fire of coals, or how he procured the fish broiling on the fire. But there was the fire, and there was the fish, and these men were in a needy condition. They were wet, cold, and hungry, besides being weary from a night's fruitless toil. And so, in the Lord's own way, it will be seen that the Lord will provide. He who taught us to say, Give us today our daily bread, Matthew 6, verse 11, did not teach us an empty phrase. Those whose need presses so closely as even to make them acquainted with hunger may see how Jesus pities them and look to him for aid. For he is the same now as he was by the lake of Galilee. And as Jesus is so careful of the condition of his people that he will have their bodies fed, we may be sure that he will nourish our souls. And continuing in verse 13, Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. And Spurgeon comments on verses 15 through 17. Feed my lambs, shepherd my sheep, feed my sheep. Fishing is not all, as many seem to think. It is a great part of our service, and would God it were more attended to. But after it has been attended to, shepherding comes in, and as a work of equal weight. Our Lord Jesus Christ would have his servants attend to this second task with all their hearts. If souls are converted, they have been brought up from the depths of sin, and the scene changes. We see a flock, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, verse 28. This flock needs as much care as any other. Yes, it needs to be tended with the utmost laborful labor and watchfulness. The Lord Jesus himself is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. John chapter 10, verse 11. The great shepherd who is brought again from the dead. Hebrews 13, verse 20. And the chief shepherd under whom he has appointed shepherds to watch for the souls of men. 1 Peter 5, verse 4. He will have those of us whom he calls to his service to shepherd those who are converted, leading, protecting, feeding, comforting, and helping them. He will call us to account if we neglect this charge, for he will require his flock at our hands, saying, Where is the flock that was given you, your beautiful flock? And picking back up in verse 18. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, 
you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remains until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. And Spurgeon comments on verse 22, What is that to you? As for you, follow me. The main thing we have to do in this world is seek after Christ until we find him as our Savior. Or, in other words, the first thing for us to do is to look to him, to trust in him. We live in vain if we do not live for God, and if we do not live by faith in Jesus Christ, the one and only Savior. It is better for us never to have been born than to live and die without faith in Jesus Christ. We must make our souls our first concern, for what will it profit us if we gain the whole world and lose our souls? After we are saved, the main business of our lives is still to follow Christ. When sin is pardoned and the eternal safety of the soul is ensured, the next thing is to seek the purity of the soul and to secure a character that will be worth having throughout eternity. There is no character worth having that is not fashioned according to the character of Christ. He is absolute perfection. In Him is nothing redundant and from him nothing is omitted that ought to be there. To be perfect, we must be like Jesus. Keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12, verse 2. We are to conquer sins and wrong desires, and, in the power of God's Spirit, cultivate grace and virtue. If I am a Christian... I am to mold my doctrinal opinions, my thoughts, words, character, and acts after the model of Christ. And continuing in verse 23, So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. That's the end of this episode. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless. And the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. If you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.